Hey, what's up my friends? It's uh, time to make the next batch of kombucha, so I thought I'd bring you along with me. This is the first video in the new place, so uh, let's see how we do, huh? It's good to have you. Tonight, we're doing the second fermentation, which is where we add a little bit of fruit to our already fermented tea. So we're not only gonna give it some delicious new fruity flavors, but we're also gonna add some carbonation to the mix, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I do it. This is my SCOBY on top here, as you can see, making all the magic happen. And basically what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna empty this thing, put some fresh new black tea in here, and start the process all over again. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is carefully remove my SCOBY here. And look at how interesting this is. We're gonna save this because I'm gonna use it for my next batch of kombucha. What I'm gonna do is pour off about a cup of fermented tea on top of my kombucha. I'm gonna need that for my next batch. There. And now the rest is for us. You can buy these little pop tops on Amazon. It keeps it nice and sealed so as the kombucha as the scoby starts to eat at the sugars from the natural fruit it releases carbon dioxide and this keeps it nice and trapped so we'll get that really good fizzy effect and you'll see that later in this video originally i was going to use mangoes for today's fruit but um they're just not quite ripe yet so i think i'll do that in the next few days i had some frozen cherries that i used for smoothies in the freezer and i'm going to try those i let them thaw so that they're at room temperature right now uh, one thing about Kombucha is it likes to be warm. It's kind of like a tropical sort of thing. So you want it to be in the warmest spot of the house. Uh, you don't want cold temperatures that'll slow the process. And you don't want super hot temperatures either because that could kill the bacteria that you're trying to use. In this little jar here, I have a half a cup of finely chopped sweet cherries that were frozen. I let them thaw out. This is my first time actually using frozen fruit, but I don't think we're gonna have a problem. Next, I've got a nice little funnel so I don't make a huge mess. And I'm going to put just about two to three tablespoons of fruit in each jar. All right, so I got the bottom of my jars filled with a little bit of this chopped up cherries. And the only thing is you just got a small hole up here. And uh, I've made the mistake of jamming fruit down in there and not being able to get it back out of the bottle. So what I've been doing when I make kombucha lately with adding the fruit part is chopping that fruit up so it's really small, easy to pour out when, you're, uh, when your kombucha is ready to go. The only thing we have to do now for the second ferment is um, pour this, uh, pour the kombucha right in here with the cherry juice. I find it easier to just transfer it to a smaller vessel so I'm not making a huge mess, but I'll still make a mess a little bit. I like to leave a little space at the top, uh, typically a little bit more than that, but this should be fine. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll just gently turn it upside down just to make sure all my fruits get mixed in with this tea. And on to the next one. All right, so our cherry kombucha is set aside for now, and we're gonna make our next batch of, uh, of kombucha, regular kombucha, where we just take black tea and ferment it. We've got four cups of water that I boiled, and then I put five tea bags in here, organic black tea. I let it steep for about 15 minutes, and it's ready to go right now. This part's really easy. I cleaned out my vessel here, and you'll notice this is my temperature gauge, so I can kind of see what I'm dealing with. This right here where the top is, that marks my one gallon mark. So at the end, I'm gonna actually fill up with regular water all the way up to that line. To start though, for one gallon, I'm gonna put a cup of sugar. I got organic sugar in here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pour my tea, still hot. The hot tea will help me uh, break that sugar up and help dissolve it pretty quickly. So I'll whisk this. Make sure all the sugar's gone.
And now I'll just fill it up pretty close to that line there before I add my SCOBY back. Water's all the way up to the top line there. Gonna give it another quick stir. And now I'm gonna add a cup of my starter liquid. That's uh, about a cup of the liquid from the last batch with my SCOBY. We're gonna go right back into the vessel. And my SCOBY's pretty wide right now. So I'll put that in, pour the starter liquid on top. You gotta let this breathe. So what I have here is a cute little dish towel. They also sell these little kombucha kits that you can buy that has a nice screen, but this works great. This allows air to pass through, but no like bugs or any kind of dirt or anything will get through. So put this on top. What I also like about this big uh, cloth here, this big dish towel, is uh, it keeps the light from passing through the jar. Um, the thing about SCOBYs, they don't really like the daylight, so very emo. They like to hide in the dark. They do like a nice warm place, and that's what I'm gonna show you, my, my little trick here. During these colder months here in uh, upstate New York, I use this seed starting mat, which is just like an electric mat that keeps it right around between 90 and 100 degrees. Uh, before I was doing my second ferment with the cherry kombucha, I was wrapping my vessel like this, but I found that it actually works great to just lay this and all the bottles right on top. So you find a nice spot that's away from your dogs and everything. And uh, this has really helped me the last few weeks, especially because it doesn't get above like 65, 66 in this house. And my SCOBY likes to hang out right around like that 85 degrees. That's when it's like the happiest. And I, I grew this SCOBY here. I followed the instructions from the Pro Home Cooks video, and I'll, I, I'll leave that uh, video link below in case anybody's interested. But this has worked great. This is my fourth batch now, and uh, I can't wait to show you the final results. So we'll, uh, we'll just set this aside for a few days, and uh, we'll, we'll check it together. It's been about three and a half, maybe four days. Okay, here we are, the moment of truth. Let's see if I waited too long or if it's not carbonated enough. All right. Oh, okay, all right. We got some build up there, so I'm gonna take it easy. But uh, it, looks, it looks like she's ready, so let's give it the old taste test. I do like to strain the kombucha. I'm not a big fan of the chunks. So I'll just compost whatever fruit I fermented that week. Cherry Kombucha by yours truly. Ah, delicious. The second ferment is really cool because you get the bubs, you get those bubbles. And also you're taking on the flavor of the fruit that is at the bottom. So it's really cool. The, the bacteria eats the sugars from the fruit and also gives the tea that overall flavor. So um, it's been a fun couple of weeks. I got, to, I got to make some really cool flavors and make my own SCOBY. And it's just been kind of a good experience, especially moving into the new place. As you can see, I've got some... I got some blemishes I gotta take care of, but you know what? We're in this together, guys. Uh, I hope you like watching this video. Uh, this is Again, this is the first video in the new place. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing some recipe videos with y'all, so if you wanna see me do some cooking, please let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna leave all of the um, products that I use to make kombucha in the description below, so like you can check it out on Amazon and see if it's something you wanna try. See y'all in the next video.